Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So before we dive into this, let's get one thing straight. Everyone who clicked on this video did so for at least one of the following reasons, and there's no shame in whichever reason you clicked on this video for. Reason one, you like me, follow my content, and like my stuff, and for that I'm very appreciative. Two, you're an intellectual and you want to see how and where I take this argument. And three, you already know what this reason is. So anyways, something I wanted to talk about and that I've been noticing for a while is this gradual progression, this softening, this, for lack of a better term, waifuining of races and creatures in D&D. And one creature in particular that I've noticed this strongly applies to, the goblin. For many D&D creatures, they drew inspiration from their original source material. And for many of them, they showed them as terrifying creatures, ones that inspired terror, dread, or awe. However, many of them slowly transformed into just something else. For example, with our goblins, they transformed from ugly, short, scrounging, knuckle-dragging abominations into what can really only be described as cute, green, short elves. Looking back on the goblins themselves, they were drawn from mainly roots in European folklore, but eventually became what we know of them in modern fantasy today thanks to Tolkien. And originally, Tolkien claimed a lot of his inspiration from George MacDonald's book, The Princess and the Goblin. The cruel depictions of goblins in that book, and many of the other character factors, were things that many people can very easily see the similarities in between The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and this book. However, for many, while MacDonald started the trend, we can all agree that Tolkien was the one who really made goblins what we know of them today in the modern era. In Tolkien's descriptions, goblins were depicted as these monsters. However, these depictions of goblins, orcs, and many other monstrous races gradually became something softer, something more attractive and less nightmare-fueled. And looking at the orcs and goblins in The Lord of the Rings, they're ugly. Their textbook definition of ugly. A face even a mother couldn't love. They became creatures that were still chaotic and generally destructive in D&D, but their features became more uniform, if that makes any sense. Watching The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, you see how gross and mangled looking the orcs and goblins are, and they look gross and lumpy and malformed, like basically just fantasy Deadpool face reveal concept art with tusks. But then, as we see in D&D, while orcs, half-orcs, and goblins weren't exactly made to look like the most attractive creatures, they did start to look like actual creatures, and in actual people. Goblins were treasure-obsessed, filthy, scampering creatures, and now they've had a massive glow-up and lore revision. For a massive chunk of role-playing experiences, these creatures just weren't human. And yeah, a lot of creatures in D&D aren't human, but humanoid, fey, or just empathetic. It was hard to look at a creature like a goblin and see a shred of anything worth having any empathy over. And that was kind of the point. You weren't supposed to have empathy over them. They were just supposed to serve as grunt creatures. They were supposed to just fight and, you know, beat off for XP. And this separation of empathy is the key. Empathy is the root of connection. If you can't look at another creature with feelings, emotions, and wants, dreams, personality, and passions, it's hard to really see them as an intelligent creature. And yeah, there are many who might look at D&D and be like, oh, I miss when orcs were big dumb brutes and goblins were filthy little scamps, but I personally really like the lore changes. And speaking of these lore changes, there's been quite a lot of lore changes to the goblin, both in D and even in other literature as well. A lot of the lore revisions were made to prevent players from being discouraged against playing a certain character, option, or race. And yes, there aren't any mechanics in D&D that say, hey, your character is going to be discriminated against, racially profiled, or, you know, there's no racism or stereotype mechanic in D&D that doesn't change the fact that inherently having racism or discrimination or a negative stereotype as a part of your character's origin and lore, it does make it harder to play with that. And even too, not every player has the stomach or the desire to want to roleplay things like that. By working to remove the darker aspects of this part of the lore from goblins, it actually worked on making them more playable and more approachable to play. And in regards to current writers' takes on goblins in fantasy, you can now frequently see them as protagonist figures where usually a majority of their arc is about them being misunderstood by humanoids and other creatures. And this is something we've been seeing across the board, especially too with like modern storytelling. 
for the longest time, we had all of these creatures that were serving as these mainly antagonistic forces just because we needed a bad guy, just because we wanted the story of a hero overcoming these challenges, and we didn't really think anything of what they were going to be facing as long as they faced something. But then, all of these creatures just being the collective punching bag to a writing narrative, it's interesting now that we're actually seeing their perspective and their side, instead of just seeing them out as these horrible creatures. It's as if the human race as a collective, in our attempt to flip the script, is slowly but surely changing and altering the goblins' lore, as if they as a race themselves are slowly changing to a new society. And personally, for the goblins at least, I think that we really started seeing this shift in goblin portrayal, in D&D at least, a few years ago. And we really have to thank Volo's Guide to Monsters in 2016 for this, and this is because they introduced them as player options. And of course, there were definitely aspects of homebrew that let you do this, but this is the first time that we really got to see the goblin as a printed character officially from Wizards of the Coast. And while we had enough time to ruminate on the goblin, the shift really hit full gear in 2018. We had the one and only, not the brave, played by the mastermind of chaos himself, Sam Regal. And as many fans know, this character was played in Critical Role's second campaign in January of 2018. Sam Regal intentionally made not as a character that people would fawn over. And this is typically not the type of race that you think people would fawn over given their previous contexts. And even too, Sam doesn't make not with this same horrific appearance that we typically saw in past material. Her nose isn't large and round. She's adorned in clothing and he makes her act like a person despite her curses and flaws. And even too, as we see the progression of her character throughout the series, we see her definitely take on more of a, I guess, regular, for lack of a better term, appearance. Before she was draped in rags, which are pretty much standard to a lot of goblin designs and contexts, looking back in even, you know, further editions and earlier concept arts with Volo's Guide to Monsters. But as we slowly transitioned into the series, we see how Sam isn't playing her as not the brave, but as Veth Bernardo, even before she transforms back into a halfling. And so, with Sam playing Not, we start to see this shift. Where characters were previously monstrous, more characters are being made inspired by Not the Brave. And honestly, too, I'm not saying it's just goblins. Personally, I think critical role characters have done amazing things for a lot of character options as a whole. I mean, I could be wrong with this, but I think critical role did fantastic things for the tiefling and the half-orc as well. And the reason why this is, seeing someone big especially in the community, play a certain kind of character can really spark a trend in inspiration and mimicry. A lot of people want to play characters that remind them of their favorite characters, or even just their favorite players and actors. And from this point, we start seeing a bigger explosion of people just playing goblins. And with more characters, there's more art, and with more art, there's a gradual change of depictions, until you arrive at this conclusion a very attractive character that somehow evolved from a horrific monster. And yet, yeah, don't get me wrong, while I am clearly showing this intentionally attractive goblin character animation in the video, there are a lot of depictions of goblins where they're still just like these horrifying knuckle-dragon creatures, and that's still okay. But at the end of it all, it is interesting to see just how far they've come from that depiction to what they are now, Anyways, though, that was the evolution and the history of the goblin and its design to the softening of its design and lore that many people are aware of today, at least on some level. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you a different perspective on the goblin and just how far they've come, and even too, I hope it's gotten you inspired to play one. And that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like and subscribe for even more D&D and commentary content. And in the meantime, keep smiling keep scheming, and I'll see all of you next time.